Another commentary done by Diggity, upper left hand corner we have S key prime as the white Terran, a friend of the stream, upper right hand corner we have nice pants as the blue Zerg. This is on circuit breaker. And this is around this is a little bit lower MMR than I usually do. It is around the 1400-ish MMR, which is uh, honestly at or above my skill playing level. Uh, this is from CPL. And I wanted to really highlight this game because I've been wanting to highlight CPL in general. I participated in CPL season six, and I kind of put that in quotes. Mostly I participated in the initial stage of a couple games getting played uh, as far as sorting out what group you're going to end up with and where your MMR and whatever grouping you're going to be with. And I ended up on the team that actually ended. I, f I feel like I was a freeloader. I was a freeloader on the team that won everything, IKEA Build Orders, which was headed up by Master Ray. But I wanted to say, if you want to learn StarCraft, if you want to get better at StarCraft, I feel like CPL is the best place to do it. If you try to hop on ladder, you can try to do that on your own, but you're going to be stranded and yeah, it's going to be difficult. I will say this, this is the caveats I would put into CPL, which is you will get some coaching if you want it, but you kind of need to put that effort in. You'll find good practice partners to play with. I can't guarantee the personalities you'll find there will be the perfect ones for you. The ones I found were great. Like everybody that I was working with was absolutely fantastic. Um, but I know a lot of people have had different experiences. I did want to also give out a huge shout out to Laser Snipe who put the uh, everything together. And that's the same Laser Snipe that we saw highlighted in BSL. Looks like we're seeing a 12 hatch from Nice Pants. Eski is building a barracks out on his front corner in the intro. But point being, you can get high level coaching. A lot of people that you've seen in BSL actually highlighted from kind of mid they're around, I don't know, 1800 level play Chobo, like top Chobo League and Hasu League guys, people that you are familiar, should be familiar names. A lot of them are coaches in CPL. So if you wanted to engage with people that you've actually seen me commentate on YouTube, go go check them out. Eski is, looks like he's first, first overlord for nice pants going to the bottom right hand corner of the map. SCV scouts going to the bottom left. So he's gonna end up scouting nice pants absolutely last. And we'll see if nice pants sends out a drone scout in clear time. It looks like he is getting that spawning pool after that hatchery. And Eski just now finishing that barracks. And he does have three SCVs on gas, which suggests, and actually doing this before he's even sealed his front door, so which suggests he's definitely going for more of a factory build uh, to start. So we'll see if it's 1-1, one, one, something along those lines. But yeah, I really, so season seven, as of today, it is June 7th, 2021. If you and that's what I am casting this. We have There's one more week to sign up. I am tempted to sign up, but at the same time, I feel like that would cut into... I feel like I've got time to cast, time to rest, and I'm not sure if I have time to do uh, CPL, unfortunately, this season. But I'm still... I'm honestly still tempted to sign up and be a freeloader again and hang out in chats and whatnot. But we'll see what happens. SCV Scout now moving in for SK Prime. He actually went from bottom left to top right. I think that might have been a heads-up play because he didn't see even Overlord anywhere in those corners. Natural expansions, it looks like we're seeing three hatch play, perhaps even three hatch. We'll see if it's three hatch zerglings to start. Two zerglings have been produced initially. Extractor is up. Usually when you're seeing more layer play, you'll see that extractor before that third hatch to get quick gas and go up to layer a little bit more rapidly. Uh, and we do, it looks like we're still seeing some more droning on the opposite side. And other corner of the map, Eski is going for a two factory build and has actually got his first vulture along the way. Still mining gas, so we'll see if he pulls off vultures or if he continues to upgrade, gets mines, something along those lines. And this is gonna be difficult for es for Nice Pants to fight off because he's going up to lair, but he still, he does have this creep colony that he can go ahead and mine, uh, uh, put down to deal with this, but this is his first scout on this vulture. And on top of that, the vultures can sneak right by this creep colony, the creep colony just morphing in. I believe that vulture will be able to get into the main based on this timing. And on top of that, he doesn't have a Hydralis den. He doesn't have anything really to fight this vulture off. Zerglings do not do well in small numbers versus this. And I take that back, the creep colony warping in. My timing's way off. See, that shows you my skill level. Hydralis den now being placed down to try to deal with. He's gonna want Hydralisks sooner rather than later. But here's the thing, with speed upgrade, which looks like it's morphing in, and even there with outer ramp block, oftentimes vultures can sneak through. First vulture gets denied. And the SCV gets taken out. That was nice play on Eski. He was trying to pull that vulture alongside, let that, uh, that SCV sneak out across the corner to try to rescue it. Unfortunately, some good blockading by Nice Pants. And a second creep colony going down. It looks like he's grabbing a second gas. And the lair is up. This is where Eski might be in a little bit of trouble. He's got the vulture speed and mines upgrading. But because he opted for a two factory build, he has not plopped down an armory. If we see 
aspire to follow this up, he might be in a bit of trouble. But instead, he looks like Lurker Aspect is being upgraded, so we are seeing a Lurker build from Nice Pants. Should I, I would put Nice Pants in a strong position here. He's got both hatcheries up and running, fully saturated, and he's going up against Vultures that he should... Oops, accidentally attacking his own SCV there. His own SCV finally getting Command Center down. It is not going to be too long, though, before Nice Pants should get some... Should, will have the ability to get some map control if he just builds some units. However, we do have a cadre of Vultures making their way across. This is only a single creep colony, and they should be able to make their way across. And there is he going to... Is Nice Pants going to block the ramp in time? He is not. Vultures get up the ramp. Kill a handful of drones. And now are up in the main, and are, they're just going to feast here. This, this is a huge shift. Actually dropping a mine... The problem with mines here is, is oftentimes they will plop on top of the larva. We do see an evolution chamber being built in the background, but these drones are just going to get obliterated here. More mines being plopped, two vultures being taken down with it, and it looks like the third vulture being wiped out by the Hydralisk. And, ooh, almost. Still getting a handful of kills here. Again, on the main, it looks like the Hydralisk poking at that last vulture. It does have speed, so it'll be a little bit annoying to deal with. The vulture should be careful. Ooh. I just needs to be careful against these mines without the Overlord coverage. And Eski actually getting a lot out of this last Vulture, just kind of patrolling it back and forth, trying to be annoying, and that is preventing Nice Pants from resaturating that expansion. He is going ahead and going to Siege Tech. He is kind of locked into more... This will be okay. He's got that armory up. Uh, this is where a tech switch from Nice Pants to Mutalisks, particularly because he's been mining gas this entire time, uh, would have been beneficial. Looks like that... Yeah, that... Vulture just on patrol. We'll see when these Hydralisks decide to go after him. Looks like a large group being produced right here. There are Lurkers actually also being morphed. And here's a problem for Eski in the comparative end of things. Ooh, another drone getting picked off. Finally, that Vulture being wiped out. I like that he's floating this barracks up here too, and he might want to pull that back. But with that barracks floating out here, he's going to get scouting on these Lurker eggs being produced. Question is, is, does he have anything to provide any sort of detection? He's rushing to an engineering bay. He does have a starport up, which might have been able to provide some drops. Also trying to get an academy. Basically trying... We don't see a science facility just yet. But basically he's trying to produce whatever he can to provide some detection. Might want to produce a couple more vultures, get some mines out in the forward field to try to kill these lurkers before they arrive. The problem with latent mines on the ground is if they're detected, even if they're not just full-on running into those mines, tend not to be all that great against lurkers because of the range they can work with. But... Every once in a while, if the Lurkers are unburrowed, have no detection, they run headlong into those mines, they end up, you know, getting wiped out. So this is what? Six? Seven? Seven Lurkers making their way to the front. One getting taken out by a Siege Tank. Two getting taken out by a Siege Tank, but now plopping right on top of that Siege Tank line. Still no detection for Eski. So he's in trouble, but the additional Siege Tanks... Ooh, nice hit on the Lurker. He's... Oh, this is brilliant play here from Eski. He's moving up his SCVs to allow them to take the... to do the splash damage on top of the siege tanks. Nice play. So lack of detection, that's a really heads up play. Nice play, saving his front door, and that was a lot of lurkers lost from Nice Pants. He's got a drop ship up. Let's see if he produces some additional vultures. Actually getting a Valkyrie as well to go after those overlords. But Nice Technique actually probably saved him the game because he had no detection here in the meantime to deal with those lurkers that were on the front door. Missile turret's going to be on the front, so a follow-up lurker play is... Not really going to produce anything for Nice Pants. He is opting to go halfway to Spire, but we'll see how many Valkyries get produced in the meantime. Two or three Valkyries out in the field are pretty decent, especially with some Goliaths underneath. More Siege Tanks out for Eski, so going just pure mech. No third base yet for Nice Pants, so he's going to try to do it on pure two base. It's kind of an interesting situation. He does have a, a large amount of Zerglings. I take it back. There's the third base for Nice Pants. Waiting once that drone's in position to take it. I like the Zergling nearby to go ahead and provide to try to deny some things. We do have two Vultures and a Siege Tank making their way north. There is a Zergling. The Zergling might spot it, but the question is, is does Nice Pants... Did he check the minimap? Did he know this was coming? Lurker making its way to the north. More Lurkers coming around the corner. Might be even... Might be able to get kind of a soft contain. Honestly, a contain that wouldn't do very much, but... Queen's Nest plopping down. Third base on the way, but a dropship now in play for Eski. Lurker there to provide some defense. Not quite in rage of that siege tank. 
The Vulture's dropping. Yeah, the Lurker not providing any defense. And honestly, that Sunken Colony not really in range to provide any defense either. Some mines getting dropped. Again, those mines next to the hatcheries end up hitting the larva instead. The drone's coming off the line to try to defend that siege tank. Lurker moving a little bit forward. Lack of detection. Should be able to clean this up, but loses a lot of drones as a result. There's the comsat, but unfortunately it comes a little bit later, and this is provoking a counterattack from Nice Pants. He's going to go ahead and dive into that natural expansion. Gets lurkers down, but the turret is still there, and we already know that Eski now has detection, but even if he didn't have detection, we'd be able to take care of this. So the counterattack very quickly cleaned up. I like this play from Eski actually blocking this 3 o'clock base. I'm sure that was a frustration for Nice Pants. And Nice Pants going to call GG right here. Feels like he's too far economically behind, which probably a decent call here. Might have been able to fight it out. We'll go ahead and rewind the replay to look at his situation as far as overall drone, uh, overall drone count. But here's the thing, yeah, once Terran gets a large enough tank army, you don't have enough Mulesks, other things to fight it off. You're not in the best situation. Part of the thing is, is, yeah, he's down to 25 drones. A little bit hurt for minerals overall. So really only mining off one base. Second base is, yeah, a ways away. And as you can see, Eski's army getting sizable. He's actually already sitting at 60 supply and climbing by the end of this. So, calling GG there. Maybe could have still fought it out, but well played by Eski. Hope you win it. Again, everybody check out CPL. Sign up if you feel like learning StarCraft. Or it's just kind of a good community to uh, be around. And yeah, final count of drones. 36 SCVs to 20 drones. And criti more critically, 57 close to 60 supply versus 40. And usually you want to be ahead at this stage as Zerg, and actually that's going to plummet even further here after this this attack right here. So we'll, let me try to go ahead and get you guys the final the final supply count here. So 55 to 37, yeah, probably in decent time to GG. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.